Well, hey guys, and welcome back. My name is Jessica Likewise, and I'm studying for my BCBA exam after 13 years of practicing ABA. So I'm making videos along the way to help you study as well. So today we're gonna to be talking about differential reinforcement of other behaviors. Differential reinforcement simply means that you're reinforcing some things and you're not reinforcing other things. For example, if I held up this pair of sunglasses and said, what is it? And you said, cookie, I would not reinforce you. But if you say sunglasses, I will. So it's as simple as that. So we're going to talk, there are five types of differential reinforcement. There's differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior, an alternative behavior, other behavior, high rates of behavior, and low rates of behavior. Today, we're going to be talking about differential reinforcement of other behavior. So stay tuned. <music> Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about differential reinforcement of other behavior or DRM. So differential reinforcement of other behavior simply means you're going to reinforce the absence of the behavior. So a child's gonna receive reinforcement whenever a behavior doesn't occur, usually in a specific time interval. So DRO is used always to decrease a behavior. Now there are some limitations of a differential reinforcement of other behavior. So essentially what you're doing is you're reinforcing anytime one specific behavior doesn't exist in an interval. However, other behaviors that you don't wanna see could happen in that interval and you could still possibly be delivering reinforcement and inadvertently reinforcing them. So it does have some limitations. Another limitation is that you're decreasing a behavior but you're not teaching an alternative behavior. So this is, DRO is not a commonly used and really not one of the most effective forms of differential reinforcement, but it does have its place. Differential reinforcement of other behavior is typically used when a behavior occurs at a high rate and it's dangerous or unsafe, self-injurious, harmful to other people, so it must be extinguished. So again, you're making a priority getting rid of this behavior at the potential cost of reinforcing other behaviors. So let's talk about some examples of when you would be using a DRO. So in our first example, we're going to talk about John. So John typically frequently engages in biting his therapist as an escape behavior. Obviously, this is a dangerous behavior and it must be stopped and it's occurring at a high rate. So what you're going to do is you're going to set a specific time interval. You're going to set that timer and you're going to, the therapist is going to deliver a reinforcer to John in the event that John does not bite during that interval. So let's say you start off with one minute. So you start off with one minute, then you go to two minutes, and you go to three minutes, and then five minutes, and then ten minutes. Now, as long as John does not bite his therapist during that time period, he gets access to a reinforcer. Even if he wasn't compliant, even if he's doing other things, it's, you always will reinforce the behavior because you're putting getting rid of biting as a high priority. So that's the potential um, consequence. Now, if John does engage in biting or attempts to engage in biting, you immediately restart the interval. So let's just say, you know, right now you're working on a one minute interval at 57 seconds, John tries to bite his therapist, then you start over at that 50 second um, interval. So let's look at another example. So let's talk about Jennifer. Jennifer is on the playground. She runs up to other children. She pushes them, laughs, and walks away. And this occurs at a really, really high rate. So let's say the parents of other kids, they're complaining. And now Jennifer's um, teacher is in a bad position because she may not be able to participate in recess. So the BCBA decides, OK, what we're going to do is we're going to reinforce Jennifer with an interval. So she really, really likes to be pushed on the swing. So every five minutes that she doesn't engage at all in running up to her friends and hitting them or pushing them, the BCBA says, OK, after five minutes, if you don't engage in this behavior, we can go play on the swing. So again, Jennifer is being reinforced for five minutes of not engaging in a behavior. Now, this is different than the other forms of reinforcement we've talked about, a DRA, DRL, DRH, DR, you know, DRI, because in those instances, we're reinforcing a behavior when it occurs, whereas DRO, we're reinforcing the absence of a behavior. So let's look at one more example. Let's just talk about Jillian. She often bites her hand when she gets upset and it's caused some issues, some scarring, it's caused bacteria and infection before. So the therapist realized, okay, this is a really, really high priority. We have to get rid of this. So it's been determined that she does this on average about once every five minutes. So that they say, okay, we're gonna start off with five minute intervals. And they tell Jillian, 
If you do not bite your hand, we're gonna set the timer for five minutes. If you don't bite your hand, when this timer goes off, you're gonna be able to watch a YouTube video. That's a really highly reinforced, um, reinforcing for her. And so, you know, Jillian has this timer, it's going on, and every five minutes when it goes off, if she doesn't engage in the behavior, then she gets to watch a YouTube video. Sometimes you can also delay the reinforcer by providing a um, token. So you can use a token board. And so let's just say like five minutes is really hard for Jillian, but you want to deliver the YouTube video after five minutes. You can actually set the timer for every one minute and then you can deliver a token. And then when she gets all five tokens, then she can actually watch her um, video. And that's another way you can use a DRO, but delay the reinforcement because oftentimes a DRO can be very disruptive to a session because it's imperative when you're using a DRO properly, when the interval ends, you deliver that reinforcer. DRO is always time-based and again, you're always reinforcing the opposite of the behavior. It does have its limitations, so you should really only use it when a behavior occurs at a high rate and it's dangerous. So I really hope this video has helped you understand what differential reinforcement and other behavior are is. I'm going to be making more videos just like this one so subscribe to the channel and I look forward to staying in touch with you.